Hello and welcome everybody. King Dems here. Back at it again. Today I have an exciting proposition for you. Is fur back? Now obviously I am referring to the Brazilian entry fragger, rifler and major winning extraordinaire fur of the legendary SK Gaming slash Luminosity slash eventually MIBR lineups. Now Obviously, we all know if we've been paying any attention to Counter-Strike that they are back. That's right. The two times major winning core have got themselves back together as Imperial, colloquially referred to as the Last Dance. Now, when this roster came together, there was not necessarily the biggest fanfare amongst a lot of analysts. I think this was kind of perceived as... Retirement home is maybe a little bit harsh. Obviously, you've got Vinny Bolts in there, a couple of players who probably have a little bit more left to give to the scene, that's for sure. But I think the general consensus was Fur, Fallen, FNX. Yeah, washed. Probably not going to cut it at the top level. Probably just doing this for one more go around. A little victory lap, as it were. Collect your cash money and piss off out of the scene. However, the results that we have seen from Imperial so far have actually been all right. They've actually been pretty promising. There have been three events that they have taken place in of note. That is the RMR qualifier. That is the Blast qualifier and the Omen Europe challenge. And we're going to take a look at all three of those tournaments Mainly focusing on this man on your screen, Fur, because he has been putting up some numbers. Now, just for a bit of context, we'll just take a little bit of a look at Fur's numbers. And as you can see, towards the back end of his time on MIBR, as well as in some of his stints on other teams since MIBR fell apart, yeah, it's not been great. Obviously, there are the odd kind of outlier performances. There's a few maps here and here which have gone okay. But in general, it's not looking too hot. Generally pretty poor. Generally going out of these events very early on. And even at the back end of his time on MABR, it's not great. Like I say, there's the odd kind of outliers here and there. Generally, the decent performances were coming in not so great events. And just in general, Fur is a long way from, if we scroll back down here, towards his peak in sort of 2017, 2016. As you can see, regularly putting in hard camera reperformances, regularly with big deferentials, regularly with very high kills per round numbers. And if you just take in these, the 0.8s, the 0.9s, the 0.7s, and if we scroll up here... Yeah, you know, it's turning into 0.6s, 4s, and there's still the occasional, like, as I say, at lesser attended events, little glimpses of the old fur. But if we look here, obviously this event was, was okay, but here we're actually starting to see him with a decent sample size, eight maps, some of the old fur returning. Now, this was the first event of note that M MIBR Imperial were involved in, and that was the RMR qualifier. Now, I want to immediately put it out there that it is a good sign that Imperial were able to make it through this qualifier. Obviously, we're only seeing from the round of 16 onwards here, but it was a longer and bigger qualifier than that being as we can see here an open qualifier there were a lot of rounds that are not shown on the hltv event page now the reason that that is promising is these open qualifiers can be tough for any team we've seen in the past that and even with this set of rmrs across both regions that there are some teams that will surprisingly not make it god sent for example when you play so many games and when a lot of them are best of ones where one slip up on a map will cost you yeah it can be pretty rough to get through these qualifiers and especially for a team like imperial where maybe they were going to be needing to rely on veteran smarts and such and maybe a team with a lot of raw skill could kind of turn up and rock them and surprise them i think it was pretty good that they managed to make it through this qualifier obviously 
they did lose in the final it was irrelevant they'd already qualified um by this stage here they'd already qualified for the rmr so these last two games were kind of irrelevant so we're not going to read too much into them however it is just worth i think pointing out that it was this case team who uh, actually have steel obviously of x uh immortals etc etc and honda actually of furious so just something interesting to note there and what we actually saw at this event as you can see here was that Vinny was actually the carry guy for imperial again this is focusing on the bit of the qualifier that was the last 16 onwards but but those are the stats that we have to go by so that's what we'll look at um and if we just have a look a little bit closer we can see that fur so here's fallen here's Vinny. Fur is down here so he's doing okay 1.12 perfectly acceptable um an open qualifier where you're not playing the highest caliber of team so maybe you'd expect him to do a little bit better but it's not bad numbers and for a player who i was honestly thinking was going to be completely washed up it's actually not too bad and if we look at some important stats down here so if we have a look at impact rating Burr is actually the second highest rated Imperial player with a 1.12. Obviously, Vinny up there with a 1.25, so not too bad. And if we look at opening kills per round, Fur is actually the highest rated Imperial player. So unsurprisingly, Fur is playing an aggressive role. That is what he has always been known for. He has been an aggressive rifle. He makes space, he makes plays, and he takes personal responsibility within the game. Now, that is borne out in the statistics that you see in front of you here. This is from that RMR qualifier that we were just talking about. And Fur actually has by far, by far and away, the best entry rating on the team. He is taking the most attempts. Fallen and Vili, not too far behind him, but still pretty healthily at the most attempts. Pretty healthily, the highest success rate. And obviously, therefore, the best entry success rating. Now... If we go over to the overview, we can see Vinny and Fallen are kind of up there as the, the carry forces, and Vinny a long way. I think this makes a lot of sense. Vinny is obviously the guy who's most recently been playing Tier 1 Counter-Strike, spent a lot of last year in Europe with Furia, been playing to a high level. So unsurprisingly, he was the guy that kind of hit the ground running when this Imperial roster finally came together and started playing some Counter-Strike. Now, this is the next event that Imperial played, and I would suggest that it is a step up in a lot of ways from the RMR qualifier. Not necessarily that much of an upgrade in the quality of team. If we go down and look here, it's sort of a similar quality of team. Not really even tier two would kind of be, calling it tier two event would be, I think, somewhat generous. Sharks, we would could say are a pretty decent side. We could say nines i still don't know how to say that team's name are also a not bad side although they did lose their best player in the off season but with a slightly more robust format um as you can see playing some best of ones but playing a couple of best of threes as well imperial did pretty well they lost to sharks actually lost with a three to one map record against sharks if you include the group stage loss and the grand final loss but yeah, it's not too bad. It is disappointing, I think, to lose that Blast Showdown spot. That would have been, I think, an excellent chance for Imperial to get some more exposure against the best teams in officials and also just get some more exposure with the lineup um, full stop to kind of competitive tier one level of play. But what I think is more important, and you can see it already here, for the best player at the tournament, this Nissim only played two maps, so despite his great rating or whatever, very small sample size. For, as you can see, far and away the best player at the event. Far, far, miles, miles, miles ahead of anybody else. If we dig into the stats a little bit deeper, he is leading the way in terms of rating in terms of KD diff, in terms of damage diff per round, in terms of damage per round. Obviously, this Nissim guy has done very well, but only two maps, so we kind of got to remove him from the consideration. But yeah, Fur is basically leading everywhere. Total kills, kills per round, and multi-kill rounds, it's Fur, and, you know, not the lowest deaths per round, but Fur is a very aggressive player. And basically, in all of the categories that are kind of relevant, Fur is absolutely kicking ass. Um, Fur is doing incredibly well. 
obviously not against the highest tier of opposition it must be said but fur is doing everything he needs to be doing to make me think he can hang at tier one level because these aren't just good numbers a 1.55 impact rating is amazing that is such high impact he's basically taking over games he is basically solo carrying amazing rating amazing statistics across pretty much every category and let's take a little bit of a deeper look against his teammates or compared to i should say his teammates so obviously this is the overview again just emphasizing how much of a carry force fur was how he was the guy leading the way for his team and if we go over to the opening kill stats these numbers are absolutely bananas he is taking way over a third one third of his team's entry attempts five players on the team he is one third of their entry attempts over like that is mind-blowing stuff and look at this success rate man <sighs> Yes, the tier of opposition is not so great. These are South American teams, not even all of the best teams in South America that Imperial are playing against, but they are beating the opposition that's put in front of them, and Fur is going absolutely ham while doing it. Incredibly aggressive, very, very high numbers. This is pretty promising stuff. Now, the final event, and probably actually the most promising of them all is obviously the Omen European Challenge. This is a European online event. Obviously saw a couple of Brazilian teams, funnily enough, OO Nation, obviously who include Cold Zero in their ranks. The other member of the major winning core who decided not to join this Imperial slash Last Dance project. Just an interesting little bit of storyline there. But against European opposition, albeit again not the highest tier of European opposition, Imperial actually came out on top. And this is, I think, very promising. I think the trajectory suggests that Imperial are improving with each event. Open qualifier, they get through it like they have to to kick things off with the new roster. Lose to Case, kind of disappointingly, but it's the best of one final. Let's not be too concerned. They just fall short in the Blast Qualifier, but again, they get themselves through to the final. They're competitive against Sharks, could have potentially won that one. And then here, at arguably, I would suggest a more competitive event. Obviously, you can see much higher world rankings on average. I would say this, you are getting towards a sort of Tier 2 slash Borderline Tier 3 kind of event. And Imperial won the whole thing. You know, they came out on top. Actually, if you look at their run, it's not too bad. A disappointing loss to Saw aside. They're comfortably putting to bed Offset and Mao's NXT. And we know Mao's NXT, yes, they've obviously recently lost JDC. But they're still no slouches. They're still not a bad tier 2 slash tier 3 side. And then here in best of 3, they get over the line versus Masonic in a pretty close series. And then they 2-0 Falcons again in a pretty close series. So they're not smashing these teams out of the park, but they are beating them in competitive games, in a actual official tournament, not just in practices, scrims, or qualies. This is promising. And, of course, we're going to look at Fur's performance specifically. Once again, Fur is leading the way at the whole damn event. Again, pretty comfortably the best performing player at the event. And this is, again, outperforming European opposition. This is promising. And again, if we just take a little leisurely stroll through these, Fur is leading the way in a lot of important statistics. You'll see his picture in pretty much all of these. Just leading the way in pretty much every single category that counts. Fur, Fur might just be back, guys. And once again, we will take a look compared to his team. Obviously, here we go, leading the way yet again. And if we go to opening kills, actually, finally, of all the three events, he was finally outdone on opening attempts. Vinny, this time, was actually uh, taking more entry jewels than Fur was. And this is the pattern that is emerging, is that Fur and Vinny are the two most aggressive players they seem to be the guys creating space, taking the entry fights, being the tips of the spear. But as you can see, Fur here still maintaining his 60 plus percent success rate. 
still maintaining the highest opening kill rating on his team basically speaking for itself those stats fur has been bodying all three of these tournaments he got better after the first one the rml qualifier the next two events the blast qualifier and this omen challenge were a step up in performance he is smashing this level of opposition and looks like he is a class above this type of player and tournament that he is currently playing in uh, and we'll just end things on this screen guys again just emphasizing look at those stats fur is leading the way he is leading the charge convincingly he is the best player on this team right now i am very much looking forward to seeing imperial play in the rmr hopefully making it to the major and in general just seeing more of this roster i was very skeptical arguably even more skeptical than i think some of my colleagues and some fellow analysts within the scene i really was basically expecting Vinny and maybe bolt to be all right fallen maybe to be serviceable but i was expecting nothing from fnx and fur wasn't expecting a huge amount from fallen quite frankly either and they have proved me wrong so far um fnx is still been pretty crap um i think in that omen event the last one he was like leading on clutches but apart from that he's been pretty poor statistically which i think we all kind of expected but the rest of the team are performing well and fur in particular I would be so excited if this guy is back. He's such an explosive, um, powerful, and entertaining player to watch on the server. If he is back and this Brazilian team, even if they're not going to live up to the name of SK Gaming, if they're not going to go and win events and win majors and stuff like that, just seeing these guys competitive, seeing Brazil have another team again alongside Furia who can turn up at these international events and do well and take some wins against big teams that would be amazing to watch that would be great for the scene and i just i hope fur is back i really hope he is the signs are looking really positive so far not only is he dominating but he's dominating to such a degree that makes you just think you just deep down inside you believe he can hang again at tier one I hope you enjoyed the video guys you know the drill pop a like pop a comment it helps me out and i appreciate it and if you did not like it you're a filthy little brazil hater and i'm disappointed